If God created us in his image, how does our evolution from apes fit in? The question assumes that we have evolved from apes. I understand that from the biologists that uh, their beliefs in evolution are a bit more complex than that. Now what that's raising is the whole question of evolutionary biology. I'm not a biologist, but I'm very interested in it because this is one of the unique parts of science, in fact the only one I know where you can derive an entire scientific theory from philosophy and worldview without any evidence whatsoever. <laughs> now, don't misquote me. Evolution has at least five meanings, and I'm not going to discuss them now. Some of them are totally uncontroversial. Look at yourselves. You're not all the same. You've probably noticed that. Why is that? Well, there has been selection and mutation, apart from other things. Evolution, in the, in the sense of natural selection and mutation, certainly does something. Darwin observed that. We can observe it today. The issue doesn't arise there with his finches and all this kind of stuff. The issue arises, does it do everything? Does it support the weight that's put on it? Now, I happen to be a skeptic, mostly for scientific reasons, but some of them are biblical. But let's be clear about something, ladies and gentlemen. Evolution bypasses the harder question, which is where did life come from in the first place? Why does it bypass that question? Because evolution, whatever it does and doesn't do, depends on life before it can get started. So it cannot be used as an explanation for the existence of life. It took Dawkins many years to admit that. The heart of his Blind Watchmaker book is the natural selection process that Darwin discovered is the explanation for the existence and variation of all of life. But he has admitted that the first part of that was wrong. And it's seriously wrong. So that's the first thing. You need to separate those two things. And um, origin of life questions interest me as a mathematician a lot more than what is the extent, or is there an extent, to which one species can move into another and so on. But let me justify my first statement. Uh, Lucretius, the Latin poet, wrote a, a wonderful poem called De Rerum Natura, on the nature of the physical universe is the usual translation. And in that book, he gets everything that Darwin got, apart from transmutation of one species into another, and he deduces it from atheistic philosophy. And this is what begins to bother me. Because there's no other area of science where that can happen. You cannot deduce the laws of motion of the planets from atheism, or indeed from Christianity. You have to go and look. But here is one area where if you, and you can do it yourselves, go home, put on your atheist hat, and write the history of the universe. You will produce an evolutionary theory in five minutes. Because that's your only possibility. The only possibility is that the universe does it itself in some kind of evolutionary process, which simply means unfolding. It often doesn't refer to any mechanism or anything else. We talk about the evolution of the motor car, which is done by intelligent engineers and so on. So that bothers me. How do you separate the atheist philosophy from actual evidentially based natural science? Now, I say I'm not a biologist, but I'm interested in the arguments they use, and I've written about them. I'm not going to go into this tonight. But the vitally important thing is to say this. Whatever evolution does or doesn't do, you can't deduce atheism from it. Evolution is a biological theorem. Atheism is a worldview. You cannot deduce a worldview from a natural science. And therefore, Again, I emphasize, whatever it does or doesn't do, you cannot use it as an argument against God, which is why there are many people who believe various levels of the neo-Darwinian synthesis who are Christians. Now, I have written about this. 
because I'm more skeptical than many of those people. And many of them are my friends, and I disagree with them, and that is a very healthy thing. But you can look at uh, those books. God's Undertaker, my first book, is one of those books. Now, how long have we got, sir?